Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to talk about some common car myths. Some are true, some are false, but this information can save you a lot of hassle in the long run. Now believe it or not, if you put your remote next to your head, that actually increases the range of how you can find your car in a crowded parking lot or unlock the doors. Watch. Now this Toyota remote has a pretty good range. The car's way over there and you can see it still works. But when it get further away, it no longer works until I put it under my chin and watch. Even at these really far distances, it then worked because something about the signal and the fluid in your head, and I got a big head, it amplifies the signal so it travels further. So if you see people in a parking lot with their key under their chin and they're twirling around in a circle, they may not be crazy, maybe they're just looking for their car. Well, there it is. And if you don't want to look foolish and you got a bottle of water for hydration around, you can use the bottle of water too. It'll amplify the signal. Such that your head's got a reasonable amount of water and space in it, and it's handy. Usually your head is attached to your body so you can push the key. You might not always have a bottle of water to hold. So that myth is real, but here's another myth. If you use more expensive premium gasoline, your car will run better. Well, in the case of most modern cars, that's not true. It actually may run worse. Modern cars are generally made to run on regular gasoline. Now, the higher octane gasoline, the expensive stuff, actually can take more pressure before it explodes and burns. Well, if you have a car that's made for gasoline that burns under less pressure, it works better in the average engine. And even if you have a modern luxury car that says you have to use premium fuel, they'll all run perfectly fine on regular fuel. They'll just lose a little bit of horsepower. For example, if you have the Ford Mustang four-cylinder EcoBoost, it's like 330 horsepower if you use the high-test expensive fuel, and it'll put out about 287 horsepower if you use regular fuel. So you lose some horsepower, but it runs perfectly fine. So not only would you be wasting, as it stands today, I just checked a gas station down the street, it's a dollar a gallon an extra for the premium fuel you'll be wasting a dollar a gallon in a normal car like this Toyota it may actually run worse with high test gasoline than with the normal and I know some people will say oh but there's better additives in the premium fuel like hey in the United States there's laws fuels have to have certain kind of additives to stop pollution to get better gas mileage so you're throwing your money away putting high test gas in most cars these days they don't need it, you're throwing your money away. So throw that myth down the toilet. Most cars, regular gasoline, they'll run perfectly fine, you'll pay less money, and actually, they could run a little bit worse if you put premium fuel, because they're designed for the lower octane fuel. Originally, back in the day, the fast racing cars, luxury cars, had engines with very high compression ratio. And if you were to put regular gas in them, they'd knock, they'd clang, clang, clang when you're accelerating. And that's bad. But modern vehicles are well beyond that. So don't get suckered into buying high test gas when you don't need it. And hilariously enough, years ago, people took the gas companies to Congress and said, how come you charge so much more for your high test gasoline for the expensive stuff because it turns out that it only costs a penny or two more to make that versus the other stuff so it needs a little bit more refining but not much well the oil companies responded well that's to recoup our advertising costs because watch all the ads on tv you'll notice the only thing they ever advertise is their top of the line premium gas. So their excuse is, well, we have to pay for our advertising costs. Well, let me tell you, don't waste your money on their advertising costs. Just use regular gasoline. The next myth has to do with oil changing. When I was a young mechanic, we changed the oil filter every 3,000 miles or once a year, right? Now, somebody's company is saying, you can change it every 10 or 12,000 miles. Well, if I were you, I would not do that because the last thing you want in a modern car is a gunked up engine. Now, for anti-pollution reasons and better gas mileage, the companies started using low-tension piston rings. The piston rings seal the pistons, right? And in the really old cars, they had 
high tensile strength, so they were real tight. They had more friction, they got worse gas mods, but they could run a really long time before they started to burn oil. As they're worn out, you gotta get another engine, right? Well, today almost all cars use these low tensile piston rings. So, if your oil gets dirty and gunky, the piston rings will get stuck in the gunk because they don't have that much tension, they won't seal right, and you burn oil. And that's why you see so many cars today that burn oil. And the manufacturers say, oh, that's normal. Our cars burn a quart of oil every thousand miles, right? It's normal because people don't change the oil. Now, you don't have to change it every 3,000 miles like you used to. As long as you use high quality synthetic oil like this, I advise with normal stop and go city driving most of the time, change it every 5,000 miles or once a year and change the filter. It's now 17 years old, it does not burn oil on a highway, it gets 37 miles a gallon, going 65 miles an hour. You don't want to ruin an engine because, oh, you don't have to change the oil as much. Don't worry about it. Now, the only real exception to this rule is if you do a lot of high-speed highway driving, you can go a lot further then you could actually go 10,000 miles. Driving on a highway is equivalent to like 10 to 15% the wear or stop and go. If you're going all on a highway, and I mean real highway, when I was in Houston, forget the highways, half the time you're going 10 miles an hour, stop and go traffic in a traffic jam, right? But if you're on an actual highway and it's going 65 miles an hour, you could change it every 10,000 miles if you use full synthetic oil and you're not gonna have any problems. But for most people who drive a lot of city stop and go, that builds up the carbon, that builds up the water that's created by combustion, you wanna change the oil every 5,000 miles. And yes, today 3,000 miles is overkill if you use full synthetic oil. Right? But if you're using conventional oil and not using synthetic oil, I would still change the conventional oil every 3,000 miles with normal steady drive. It doesn't work as good as synthetic oil. It doesn't flow as well. Don't fall for this myth that, oh, you can change your oil every 10, 12,000 miles. It won't hurt anything. In the long run, it's going to wear your car out. Because let's face the facts. They're making cars cheaper than they used to. Now, the next myth is an interesting one. You're going on a highway, you're better rolling your windows down than running your air conditioner because you'll get better gas mileage. Well, this might have been true decades ago when American cars had big air conditioning compressors that used a lot of energy, but any modern car built in the last 15 or 20 years has more efficient air conditioning compressors. And it turns out that if you're driving down the road with your windows rolled down, less efficient driving down the road. You have more wind drag. And that wind drag negates any amount of power that a modern air conditioning compressor uses. So, and I've done experiments. I had a customer who drove from Houston to the Indianapolis 500 and back with his Ford Mustang. On one trip there, he rolled the windows down. On the way back, he had the AC on. He got the same exact gas mods, whether the AC was on or the windows were rolled down. And this old Toyota got 37 miles a gallon driving in the summer from Rhode Island to Tennessee with the air conditioning on the whole time. My wife does not like being hot. It doesn't knock your gas mods out. And at highway speeds with the extra wind turbulence, it gets the same gas mileage. Now, another myth is that eh, tires are just tires. Doesn't matter what you got in your car. That isn't going to affect your gas mileage and stuff like that. Just go out and buy the lowest price tires and don't waste your money. Well, of course, that's a myth. Cars' tires are the contact point on the road. If they have the wrong tread design, if they're poorly made, and they have too much friction, they can knock the heck out of your gas mileage. And of course, keep them properly inflated. Because if they don't have enough air, they're going to have squashed down. They're going to get more friction. You're going to get worse gas mileage. And of course, you don't want too much pressure either. Because too much pressure, the center of your tire will wear out more because it's bulging out toward the middle. You can lose traction. And of course, it's dangerous. Because if you put too much in, 60, 80 PSI, when they get hot, they could explode. And buy good tires that have a good tire traction, but aren't outrageous, so you get bad gas mileage. Now, I know most people don't think twice about the car tires, but think about them once. Buy good tires with a good gas mileage tread pattern. They've got ratings for that. You can research it all. And always keep the correct pressure in them for both safety and gas mileage reasons. Now, another myth is when you're filling your car up, the pump shuts off. You can keep adding gas so you can go further and put more gas in your tank. You do not want to do that. When it shuts off, leave it. If you keep filling it up, some of the gasoline will get into your EVAP system. There's a big old tank under here. 
And there it is. It's called the evap canister assembly. It's there to separate gas fumes from the air and then either pure air comes out or the gas fumes are vented back into the engine intake and burn. If you keep filling up your gas after it shuts off, you're going to get raw gas in that system. That system's made for gas vapors. Raw gas will destroy it. And in this case, the evap canister is over 300 bucks, just in parts. Now, another myth is that Oh, your car's always needing a tune-up. Now, back in the day, in the 1960s, when I was a young mechanic, you had mechanical points that wore out, you had carburetors you had to clean and adjust, you had to adjust the valves all the time. There were a lot of things involved in a tune-up. You just set the ignition timing. But modern cars are all run by computers. And most use iridium spark plugs like this. I just changed these on a guy's car. They're not in that bad shape. They were the original ones. The car had 200,000 miles on it. It was still running okay. So what about setting the ignition timing? You can't on a modern car. It's all done by computer. What about setting the idle speed? Again, all done by computer. There really is no such thing as a tune-up anymore. I mean, hey, you can easily change your own air filter. And when it comes to spark plugs, this has four. You can change them in 10 minutes. It's not hard to do, but it doesn't need to be done all that often. And as for adjusting valves that you had to on the old engines, hey, most cars these days have hydraulic valves that adjust themselves. And ones like this Toyota, they use stainless steel shims. Theoretically, they need adjusting. This has never been touched. My 94 Celica has never been touched and it still runs fine. It's a royal pain because you got to buy all these different size shims, measure them, take them off the engine, put them in. It's a real pain. But these systems are so well made that normally to the life of the engine, you never have to touch them. Now, unfortunately, if you own a Honda, many of them still use the old fashioned rockers that have a screw with two bolts on them. You got to loose them and you got to adjust the valve. Then you do need to adjust them. They do wear and it's a gigantic pain in the butt. Some myths are true and some are just a bunch of hogwash. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.